Okay, so let's uh, determine the oxidation state for every element here. Now, first thing you want to do is figure out the total charge that you want. So if you guys take a look at this compound, uh, what's the charge on this compound? Yes, yeah, neutral. So it's zero, right? So when you add everybody up, they need to, it needs to come out to zero, okay? All right, easiest thing to do is just take a look at the oxygens, okay? Oxidation, oxygen is always going to have an oxidation number of negative two. There's only one exception, and that's when it's in uh, peroxide. Um, but we really don't look at peroxide, so don't worry about it too much. Um, so if we have four oxygens, and oxygen is always negative two, what's the total negative energy carried by all the oxygens? Eight, yeah. So it's going to be negative eight. And again, we need to end up with a total of zero. The next one that's pretty easy is hydrogen. Um, hydrogen is most of the time going to be positive one. So if we got two of them, we're going to have two. Okay. All right. So from there, I'll give you guys about maybe a minute to figure out the oxidation number for sulfur. Sulfur is the one that can usually be variable. Um, so take a minute. It should be a pretty easy equation. We'll figure out the oxidation number for sulfur. <clears throat> Yeah, it's going to be positive six, okay? And that's how we can get it to zero. So um, hydrogen has an oxidation number of positive one. Sulfur has an oxidation number of positive six. And oxygen has a oxidation number of negative two. Now, another easy way that we can uh, double check our work is if you look, SO4 is a polyatomic, right? It's sulfate, which is SO4 two minus which means just by looking at these two, you should get an oxidation of a negative two, which is what we end up getting, okay? So there's multiple ways to check your work, make sure you're right, um, but that's the system, okay? Any questions? Okay, let's uh, move on to the next question. I'm gonna just go through this with you guys. Um, remember, uh, ox to figure out which species is oxidized and reduced, you just need to remember that funny acronym, oil rig. Okay, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And so basically, we just want to take a look at the equation, the left and the right side, and figure out who is gaining electrons and who is losing electrons. And we can do that by looking at the oxidation number um, of all the stuff here, OK? So let's take a look at magnesium. So this is magnesium, and it's neutral. So what's the oxidation number of magnesium on the reactant side? Zero, that's correct. Let's move on. Uh, we got HCl. Now, we know that hydrogen is positive one most of the time. And if you look at the rules, uh, halogens are negative one usually, which makes sense. So they balance out to zero. Okay. Go to the right side. Um, if you take a look here, again, halogens are usually negative one. And if there's two chlorines, what does the oxidation number of magnesium have to be on the product side? Positive two, exactly. <clears throat> And then if we take a look at H2, H2 is neutral. And so uh, what's going to be um, the oxidation number for hydrogen here? Zero. Zero, that's correct. And it's because this is the, uh, it's the natural state of those elements, the hydrogen gas and solid magnesium. Okay, so right off the bat, we can figure out which one is not oxidized or reduced. Which one is not oxidized or reduced? Chlorine, yeah, because it's negative one on the left side, negative one on the right side, right? So this guy is not oxidized or reduced, okay? So we just need to figure out uh, what happens to magnesium and we'll be all done. So if you take a look at magnesium right here, did it gain electrons or lose electrons? It lost electrons, yeah, it lost two electrons, yeah. Again, this is the part where it gets confusing because you lose something and you become more positive. But again, it's like losing Mr. O, your life becomes more positive, right? You're gonna lose me. I don't, know, I don't know how many days I have left. Okay, so this guy right here is oxidized, but I appreciate the thought. All right, which means obviously this guy is going to, hydrogen is going to gain electrons. Okay, and they'll gain one electron each, so it'll be a total of two. Um, and this guy is reduced. 
<clears throat> All right, any questions? Hopefully not too bad. Now, um, before we move on, let's talk about how we can split up this equation. When we have redox, um, something that we can, or a lot of times on the AP test that comes out is something called half reactions, okay? And in half reactions, what we do is we just write the reaction for the oxidized species, or we write the reaction for the reduced species. So let's write the re half reactions for oxidation first, okay? So if you take a look at um, this equation, we can see that magnesium is oxidized, right? So we're gonna start the reactant side with just magnesium. And then this guy is gonna lose two electrons. So magnesium is gonna become Mg2 plus, and then we're gonna put plus two electrons just to show that it lost two electrons. Okay, so this is the half reaction, the oxidation half reaction. Now the half reaction for reduction here is going to be for hydrogen. So it's, a, it's gonna be two H plus right here. And then it's going to, sorry. And then it's going to gain electrons. We gotta do plus two electrons. And it's gonna become H2. Okay, so this is the half reaction for reduction. So just be comfortable working with uh, both oxidation reduction in the same equation, but also being able to derive the half reactions, okay? Um, in oxidation half reactions, the, the electrons are products. In reduction, the electrons are reactants, okay? which makes sense because they need to combine in order to form a neutral one. Okay, cool. All right, so we'll do a problem just so you guys can get some practice. And then, so we have one more example. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, so this is another example before we move on to the problem. So here we have this reaction right here. If you take a look at iron, iron loses electrons, right? So the half reaction would be this right here. Uh, you have regular iron, right? And it's going to separate from two electrons. That's why this guy lost two electrons. That makes sense. So this half react oxidation half reaction is just demonstrating that we had regular iron, and it lost two of its electrons. So now it's separated from the two electrons. So that's why it's oxidized. Reduction is where something gains electrons. So we have something that gains two electrons, and it becomes H two. Okay. So all we're doing is basically separating uh, what's being oxidized and reduced in this equation into two separate ones. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys about about three minutes. I want you guys to do what we just did together for this reaction right here, figure out the oxidized and reduced species. And then after that, see if you guys can write the half reaction. Take about three minutes to do that, and then we'll go over it together. So by taking a look at this reaction, you should have identified that chromium is your oxidized species. And it makes sense because it goes from positive to more positive, right? If you got rid of more Mr. O's in your life, you would become a much more positive person. It is using the electron. I'm the electron because I'm negative. So is the electron does it for the reduced? No, confusing. Reduced means you gain electrons. Because your morale is reduced. Is yes. <laughs> I feel like this can get so confused. Just remember oil rig, guys. Oil rig is the most best way to do this. Wait, Mr. O, I'm confused on how glucose grades reaction. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, what order is it going to Um usually you want to write it the same way in this reaction. I'll go over it right now. So would it be like CR? Uh, so the CR plus plus is CR3 plus yes. and the plus two. Correct. Yeah. All right, guys. So shh. so for the half reactions, um, your oxidation half reaction will be uh, CR plus, and then it separates into CR3 plus and two electrons, right? Because if two electrons fall off, chromium becomes more positive. And then for the reduction, you're going to have your tin and it's going to gain two electrons. The two electrons are gonna come from the chromium, 
and then it's going to become SN2 plus. Okay, and so the mechanics of how this works is chromium is going to give the two electrons right here to the tin, and that's why it becomes uh, less positive. Okay, so those are the half reactions. Um, make sure that if you if this is a little confusing, that you guys take a look at your reading, um, do the problems because. If you have trouble with half reactions, this unit's going to be very difficult just because we're going to be working with this quite a bit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. All righty. Any questions? Okay, let's move on. So we're going to skip the next section. It is redox titrations. We're not going to talk about it too much. There's not too much on this on the AP test. So I'd rather spend more time on other things. Huh? The full effort to be yeah, if it is, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> so if you're skipping over it here, it's going to be like hard. It's no, it will not be. But I do recommend looking at your reading because it might be on the AP test. You never know. Okay. I don't, trust, I don't, trust, you don't, don't trust me. Okay, so let's take a look at the next part. This right here is kind of the building block for electrochemistry. It's reduction potentials. And so the concept is that every half reaction has a electric potential or voltage associated with this. So you know how we talked about every equation has or reaction has enthalpy, right? Heat absorbed or heat released. Um, in electrochem, we talk about the electric potential or the voltage. Okay, so we got an example right here. We have the half reaction for Zn2 plus, and then you have the electrical potential right here. Okay, so you'll see it as E equals something voltage. All right, now, just like enthalpy, if you can flip the equation, so if you take a look at this, this is going to be uh, when it is reduced. If you flip it to when it's oxidized, right, it's going to flip the sign of the voltage. So it's almost, it operates almost exactly like enthalpy. If you flip the reaction, you just flip the, the sign for the electrical potential. Okay, so we got this right here. It's negative 0.76. Um, and here you got positive 0.76 because you flipped the reaction. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can consider for these half reactions electrons to be part of the reaction. It's just a reactant or product. All right. And then the key thing here is the larger the potential for the half reaction. So the more positive, okay. And this isn't talking about absolute value. Um, the more positive the potential for a half reaction, the more likely it is to occur. So if we're talking about spontaneity and you're comparing these two reactions right here, okay, do you guys see how the second reaction for lithium has a bigger number, a more positive number? This guy is more likely to happen than this one right here because the E value is bigger. So if you take a look at the two reactions, you got, for the first reaction, 2.87, you got 3.05. This one is more likely to happen than this one because the voltage is bigger for this one right here. Okay. Do you have a question? Okay. All right, so based on that information, uh, we can calculate whether or not a redox reaction is going to happen by looking at the two half reactions that make it up. So we're talking about, again, spontaneity, whether a redox reaction will happen. So what you have to do, and I encourage you guys to write this down, is the two things that you need to keep in mind when you're calculating the potential or whether or not the redox reaction is going to happen is first, you want to add the potential for the oxidation half reaction to the potential of the reduction half reaction. Okay. okay. And the key thing that makes this different from enthalpy is that if you double or the reaction, you do not double the electrical potential. Okay. So for example, if I change this in order to balance into this, if I double the reaction, you know how in enthalpy we would double the enthalpy, right? Here we keep the electrical potential exactly the same. So you could like buy it. By a thousand, a million. Also. Yep, it's gonna stay the same. 
that's where it gets a little, you might get a little confused because everything we've done so far, if we multiply the reaction, we multiply the other variable that comes with it, but for uh, electric potential, we do not, okay? There might be a question on your test where I try to trick you with this. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Huh? No, it's just a hint. He's basically uh, telling us it's gonna get Yes, right, just right. what I'm saying is just remember that. Yeah. Why you did. I feel I feel threatened by you sitting there right now. <laughs> I, I have trauma from that experience. Is Brendan your tr trigger word? No. I'm Need a trigger warning for Brendan? No, I don't. I'm not. I'm not that emotionally weak. You're just pulling this <laughs> Yeah, I might not be myself. Okay, so um, just make sure you guys keep that in mind. Uh, so if you want to figure out the potential of a reaction, you just add the two together and don't multiply it when you need to balance out half reaction when you put them together. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Oh. And I guess we will take a look at our first problem. So we'll do it together. Okay. <clears throat> so um, this is the kind of question that we'll be uh, that you'll be looking at. So here we have the full equation, and we got the two half reactions. Now, I know I don't ask you guys to do this, but if you guys can just copy down the regular equation and the two half reactions on your paper, um, just so that you guys have it on your paper as a reference as we're solving out the problem. Okay, so I'll give you guys about a minute to uh, finish copying that down. If you want to try the problem based on the info we had earlier, uh, feel free to go ahead. Um, but we're going to start going over in about two minutes after you copy this down. Okay, so um, we have our reaction right here. We also have the two half reactions and the electrical potential for both of them. Okay, now before we start, let's uh, kind of talk review the concepts we just talked about. Okay, so we just talked about how um, the more positive or the bigger the electrical potential, okay, it means that the reaction is, is going to happen, okay? Reaction more likely to happen. Okay. So that's kind of the premise that we're going off of. So let's take a look at this problem right here, part A. Okay, will placing solid zinc in a solution containing Ag plus ions produce solid Ag, okay? And so what we're looking at is basically, if we combine zinc, solid zinc, with Ag plus ions, okay, will this reaction take place? Okay, that's kind of what A is asking. Does that make sense? Yes? So uh, we said earlier that the electrical potential is going to equal the sum of the potential of the oxidation and reduction half reaction. So all we got to do is take a look at these two reactions and add them together. Okay, so the electrical potential for adding solid zinc to silver ions is going to be the ones where you have them on the correct side of the equation. So here zinc is on the reactant side. So is this on the correct side of the equation? Yes. So we're going to take the electrical potential here. So 0 0.76. If we look at the reduction, is Ag on the correct side of the equation? Yes. So we're going to add that to 0 0.8. Okay. So if you add these together, you should get 1.56 volts. Now, if we take a look at this, is this a positive or negative number? Positive. And so since this is a positive number, that means that this reaction will take place. Okay, and that's your justification. Your justification is that when you add, God oh bless you, the reduction, not reduction, electrical potentials for the two half reactions, you get a positive number. So this will take place. So the positive number is really small, like 0.7 is mm -hmm. still Yeah, it's still gonna happen. Yeah. And I'll show you guys why with part B. Yeah. And so basically what this is saying is that since the electrical potential is positive, zinc will get oxidized. It, silver will be able to basically steal electrons from the zinc. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Let's go to part B. Now part B kind of helps us understand this by looking at the reverse of what happens. Okay, so 
if we take a look at part B, part B is when we look at solid uh, AG in zinc. So it's when we put solid silver with zinc ion. And basically we're checking, is this reaction going to take place? Okay, now, if you take a look at the two half reactions that we were given, um, they worked for part A, right? So if we're going to work it for part B, what do we need to do to each reaction? Yeah, we need to flip it. Now, if we flip the reactions, what happens to the electrical potential? Yeah, you flip the signs and make them negative. So that means here, we would have to add negative 0.76 and negative 0.8. Okay, and so obviously you guys can tell it's gonna be negative 1.56. And if you notice the electrical potential is negative, so will this reaction happen? No, it will not. Which makes sense, right? Because if we take a look at the first one, silver is basically like the bully. It's stealing zinc's lunch money, right? It's stealing the two, ele two electrons from zinc. Okay, so silver, in terms of electrical potential, is a stronger element, for lack of better terms, right? Okay, silver is strong enough to steal electrons from zinc. doesn't matter what state of matter it's in. But here, what's happening is zinc is trying to steal electrons from silver. Is zinc strong enough? No, so it can't steal electrons from silver. Okay. No. No. Yeah, it's like if I try to steal Brendan's lunch money, he can't do it. It's not strong enough. But if Ben Brendan tries to steal my lunch money, that's happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my ankles are too weak. Yeah. No, dude, you'll kick my butt. But I'll still fight you for my lunch money. Yes. All right. Makes sense, guys? Okay, so very simple. You just need to flip the reaction to figure out the other way. Yeah. Uh, and like an explanation, can we just write like, like yeah. is positive? Yeah. Yeah. The electrical potential is positive for first one. But like the actual, like, we have to write out electrical potential. No, you can just write E. Yeah, E is fine. Yeah. Especially if you have the calculation to support it, okay. then that's fine. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so the big part of electrochem, and this, dude, I hate seeing this, but this is what they're going to give you on the AP test if they put um, electrochem on there. So um, hopefully you have this on your screen for your Chromebook. Uh, we're going to be talking about something called a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell. Okay, and basically in this system, a favored redox reaction. So we talked about how to make what constitutes a favored redox reaction, it's positive electrical potential. It is used to generate a flow of current. This is basically how batteries work. Okay. And basically, what happens is they're going to tell you the reaction that's taking place in your galvanic cell. They'll tell you the electrical potential. They may or may not give you the half reactions, but I mean, it's pretty easy to derive it. And then you have to take, and then they'll give you a system like this and ask you a bunch of questions about it, okay? So this is how I usually see, or this is what I've usually seen electrochem uh, assessed on as an FRQ, things like that. And so just be familiar with the system. We're gonna break it down and go over all the different parts, but basically um, this is how they usually like to test the electrochemistry. Yeah. It's like, they give us the picture like the yeah. Oh, good question. Yeah. So they might not require the E value for oh. the half reactions. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen it without this, but, and then you'll just need the half reaction, but not the actual E values for each. Yeah. You, you don't have to calculate this. There's no way to do that. Okay. So let's talk about a galvanic cell. And then, um yeah, we'll go into some more descriptions about it. Okay. So there are two parts to a galvanic cell, the two, or I guess four parts, but two really big parts. The first is the cathode. Basically the cathode is the positive part of the galvanic cell. And that's going to be where reduction takes place. And that's the positive charge of the galvanic cell, okay? The other big part is the anode, which is a negative part. And that's where oxidation takes place, which makes sense, right? Because in oxidation, you lose electrons, okay? And then here, you're going to gain electrons. 
And then usually there's, or always, there's going to be a wire that connects them. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that the electrons move from the negative to the positive charge. Okay, you might want to jot that down. Electro electrons move okay, from the negative anode to the positive cathode. So that's the third component, the wire that connects them. And then the fourth part is the salt bridge. And basically what the salt bridge does is it keeps the system neutral. Okay. So if you don't have the salt bridge, basically the since these will become electrically imbalanced, the uh, basically there'll be no more flow of the electrons. That's what the salt bridge is for, okay? But just remember, it says how, you see how it's KCl for the salt bridge? This guy does not have anything to do with the half reactions, okay? So they'll put that in there and then you might be tempted to be like, oh, that's part of the reaction. We need to add KCl, um, but this has nothing to do with the actual reaction that's going on. Uh, it's there to make sure the electrons flow back, and that's why it creates a current. Yeah. So they'll add that. Basically, a mess with you. What's up? Who knows? Everything is fair game. All fair in chemistry. All fair in chem and AP. <laughs> Yeah, Cam and Sri. Yeah. Did you have a question? Uh, no. Or was it a comment? Did you always say like anything's fair game? Did you just turn it all at once? Maybe. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, galvanic cell. Okay, so the electrons moving from the anode to the cathode, that's what's called a current. Okay, the current is the movement or flow, I guess flow is a better word. Okay, it's the flow of electrons. Okay, so if you see that term current, it basically is just talking about electrons moving from the anode to the cathode. Through the wire, right? Yes, that's correct. Now, um, each of these two cells, okay, there's two solutions. Basically, in this solution, this half reaction is taking place. And in this solution, this half reaction is taking place, okay? And the wire is what allows one of them to take electrons from the other. Okay, the electrons travel through the wire. Right. Yes. Does this have, like, you've made that before? What do you mean? Yes. Like, does the copper, like... Yeah, you're going to precipitate. Yeah. Usually you put a piece of metal into the other solution and it's going to leach the metal ions from the solution the onto the cell. The yeah. Part. No, no, the, not the metal. The That's when you put them together. When you leave it like this, it stays like this. The metal doesn't appear on the other side. The only thing that's moving are the electrons. Yes, it's creating a solid from this. So this is getting added to this. So basically, a, a layer is oh, adding on to it. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the other way. I thought you meant like copper is moving from here to here. No, no. Yeah, the only thing that's moving are electrons. Okay. So um, basically, what's happening at the cathode is, like we said, reduction is taking place, right? And so basically, the solution here is becoming less positive. Okay, right, because that electrons are gonna flow into here. Okay, does that make sense? And then here, this solution is gonna constantly become more positive, right? Because it is losing electrons to the other solution. And basically, what's gonna what the that's what the purpose of the salt bridge is. The salt bridge is to continue moving the electrons back. Okay, so that the electrons are constantly able to move. So there's a potential. Okay, so one of them can stay positive, 
one of them will stay negative because eventually um, there's going to come a point where you're not going to be able to get more positive. You're not going to become less positive and then the flow will stop. Yeah. Wait, so, so that solid the problem goes back and forth plus saying these electrons to go back and forth. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much um, all the components of a galvanic cell. Uh, so we'll it's to measure the potential of these two, uh, yeah, the half reactions. So um, real world application would be this how batteries work. You have one potential on one side and the other, that's what allows the electrons to move in between them and the electrons move and basically create power for all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so like the transition is possible, but like water and Yeah, so you got water and you got this ionic compound dissolved. It's an aqueous. Yeah, these are aqueous in there. Okay, this side too. Why is this one side blue and one side So we can tell the difference between. I don't know. I, I didn't make this picture. <laughs> look at look at the equations, not the not the colors. <laughs> yeah, this one's water. Sorry. Here. Better? Here, let me color it blue for you. Yay. Yeah, better? Okay. Yeah, what's up, Susie? We'll, we'll go over one. Yeah, yeah, we'll go over one. Yes. Oh. Oh, shoot. There's a typo on this. Yeah, it should be switched. Sorry. I too. All right. Uh, let's move on. So, uh, galvanic cells. Keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna talk about the reactions that go into these galvanic cells, and then we're actually almost done. Did I miss a problem? Oh no, no, we did that problem. Okay. Okay, we're uh, we're good. Okay, so um, electrolytic cells, again, this is the same thing as the galvanic cell stuff. Um, this here though, in an electrolytic cell, different from a galvanic cell, an outside source of energy voltage is used to create an unfavored redox reaction, okay? And we'll talk about what that looks like in just a second. Okay, but if you see a question that talks about electrolytic cell, um, just know that the voltage, the energy is coming from outside. Um, it's not a favored redox reaction. Okay, but the math portion is exactly the same. Okay, I underlined it and bolded it here, but the half reaction that's more positive is the one that will occur. So here we have an example, a little different format from last time, but if you guys take a look at it, um, you got the first reaction with negative 0.25. You have the other one, which is negative 0.8 and here the nickel reaction the first one excuse me is more likely to occur um, because it has a more positive value okay essentially like, less, like, more positive, 0.25. closer to zero yeah yeah so it's different from enthalpy and stuff where we're looking at absolutes because here um enthalpy the negative and positive value sign tells you what direction the energy is going right um here it's actually the the quantified yeah. okay same thing as before um make sure that when you flip it you flip the the, the what is it the voltage as well and then when you multiply the equation you're not going to be changing the potential Okay, so let's do a problem together. We're gonna to move on to 14.6. Um, I would recommend, again, same thing as before, writing down these two half reactions. Um, this is kind of like a Hess's Law problem, which you guys told me you enjoy for whatever reason. But... No, that's why I said, that's why Mr. Hightoff's the goat. He loves just canceling. Oh, that's why I'm Oh, makes sense. <laughs> Just like people's grades. All right. So um, I'll give you guys a minute to copy this down. If you want to start trying it, you can. 
um, and then, but we'll go over in about a minute or so. Okay, guys. So here, what we want to do is we want to create the reaction that is most positive. Okay. All right. So if we want to create the reaction that is most positive, obviously we need to flip one of the equations. Which equation should we flip? The top one. Yeah, because positive one, I know, it's a little confusing. Positive 1.36 is bigger than positive 1.23, right? So if you flip this guy right here, it's going to be a bigger number. So if we flip it, we will get a uh, Cl2 gas and two electrons produce two Cl ions. And then we'll flip the electrical potential to positive 1.36 volts. Okay, so I know all this info can seem a little confusing, but in terms of the actual math, I think it's a lot easier than the stuff that I've subjected you to. You know, just one of them. But wouldn't that make it more fun? Uh, yes, but if we flip both of them, then one of them is not being oxidized and one of them is not being reduced. Yeah, okay. you can't have both of them doing the same thing because yeah. you need to create that potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question though. Okay, so we don't need this guy anymore. Okay, now um, we are ready to combine the equations, but we do need to do something first. Anybody have an idea of what we need to do first? How many electrons do we have in the first equation? How many do we have in the second equation? Two, so are they balanced? Yeah. Nah, so you gotta balance it. So the balancing for this is amazing. You just double it, but you don't need to change anything. Oh my gosh, incredible, incredible, no math. No, you do not touch the voltage, yeah. Come on, man, keep up. <laughs> All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out the four electrons. Okay, then we just bring everybody down to... CL gas plus two waters. It's gonna produce O2 gas for H plus for CL minus. And then you just need to add the electrical potentials. Okay, so 0 0.13 volts. Yeah, there you go. That is the net reaction that is spontaneous. Just like no no I, wait what yeah yeah you you cancel out the four electrons and everything just comes down yeah that's correct does that make sense but that's how you can take two half reactions and figure out how to make the reaction spontaneous. Okay. Uh, no, we'll take our break and then we will, uh, yeah, we'll move on. Okay, guys. So the last topic of the year is electroplating. Okay. And so basically electrolytic cells are used to um, use an electrical current to plate out a metal from solution, okay? So we'll talk about, uh, basically you have dissolved ions and then you make them solid again. That's what electrolytic uh, cells are used for in electroplating, okay? So um, because they form on the plate. So you put a piece of metal on there and then the ions form the solid on the plate. You're plating them out, okay? So um, there are four steps that are involved. The first is going to be this, or first is going to be this equation right here. Um, the current, which is represented with I, it's measured in amperes or A, okay? And that's equal to the charge in coulombs divided by the time. So a lot of times you'll be asked, how long will it take to plate out a certain mass of metal from solution? Or they'll give you the time and they'll ask you, oh, how much metal will you plate out? Okay, so that make sure you guys write that first equation down.
All right, next we're gonna look at the second step. So once you know the charge, okay, the charge is Q, um, you can figure out how many electrons are involved in the reaction, okay? And this is the equation that you guys can figure out, okay? Oh, it disappeared. Okay. But anyway, um, if you guys take a look at your AP uh, equation sheet, there's going to be a constant. It's called Faraday's constant. F is equal to 96, 485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Okay. And you can you basically use this in order to figure out um, how many moles of electrons are there. Yeah, nine six five hundred is fine. Yeah, you can round it up. Yeah, I'm looking at your equation sheet right now, and it gives you the four eight five. But if you're on five hundred, it's not going to make a big difference. Okay. 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 Step three: You're going to look at the moles of electrons and the half reaction for the metal. And then you can calculate how many moles of metal you played out. Okay. So basically, you're using, you're finding charge to find moles of electrons, to find moles of the metal. And then obviously from there, you can turn the moles of metal into grams. Okay. So that's kind of the steps. Um, so step one, you're looking for Q, the charge. Step two, you're finding moles of electrons. Step three, you're finding moles of the metal. And then step four, you're finding grams of the metal. Okay, so that's roughly what you're gonna be looking for. Um, sometimes you can go in the reverse direction. It's just, everything's kind of the same uh, calculations. We got in the elevator and it started moving up before the door closed. The door was wide open. Great. <laughs> That's really safe. Great and to hear. We didn't even press a button. It just started what? moving up while the door was open. Nice. We didn't want to go up either. <laughs> I should have played chicken. Or it pulls their hand off the wall. Like oh. Smells like pee. Yeah. Is it because you peed your pants because you're so scared? <laughs> Come on, Jay. Hey, no shame in that. No, I'd be scared too. Not mine. The my hair is next to it. I'm in Stefan's queue already. No, it's the open thing. just like on the carpet. There's like a spot to see the thing where it's wet. That's and it's, and it's just like pee. And I think Alice is left on it. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Anyway, okay, let me show you guys how to solve out this problem. Um, We'll do one example together, and then I'll have you guys try one on your own, okay? So I know this looks a lot really complicated, but this is pretty easy in terms of the calculation. So I actually have a sample calculation right here. I'm going to cover it up though, um, just to show you guys how I would set it up or how you guys can set it up, okay? So it tells you here, if you have a current of 2.5 A, now we know that current is I, okay? I is 2.5 amperes. It's run through a solution of iron three chloride. So FeCl3, okay? And the time that it's run or it's, uh run through in there is 15 minutes. And you're trying to calculate the grams of Fe3 plus. Okay, so that's kind of what the problem is telling us. We have these three uh, pieces of information, and then we're looking for grams of iron. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so if you guys remember the first equation we looked at, I is Q over T. Okay, we can solve for Q, okay? So uh, the value that we would plug in for I is 2.5 amperes. We're solving for Q and then we're doing time, but in chem, we always need to turn it into seconds. So all you're gonna do is, oh, I scientific, yeah. 15 times 60, that'll give you 900 seconds. Now, um, to find Q, 
all we have to do is multiply 900 by 2.5. So 150. And that's going to be your coulombs. Q is always coulombs. Okay. Oh, I'm stupid. Sorry, why did I do that? That doesn't even make sense. Thank you. 150 does not even make sense. Sorry, guys. I'm just excited to be done. Yeah, 2250. Okay, so you have your coulombs now. Now, if you guys remember what we talked about with Faraday's constant, okay, we're going to get rid of coulombs and we're going to turn that into moles of electrons, right? So one mole of electrons is going to have, um, and again, you can use the Faraday's constant on your AP sheet, which will have you know, the ten, the hundredths, the tenths, and the ones place, or you can just round it to 500, okay? And this will tell you the moles of electrons that's uh, that you're working with here. So 2250 divided by uh, 96500, and you'll get something like that, 0 0.023, and that'll be moles of electrons. All right, so now we got to convert this into the moles of your metal. So we have uh, this many moles of electrons. Now, if you look, take a look at FeCl3, you know that it's, this is going to be iron three, right? So that means you're working with three electrons moving around. So you'll have three moles of electrons for every one mole of iron. Okay. And since you're trying to find grams of iron, all you got to do is then multiply by the molar mass. What's the molar mass of iron? Ooh. Thank you, 55.84. Okay. And then you solve it up, and that's going to allow you to calculate how many grams of iron plates out. Okay, so 0 0.43. All right, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, thank you. Fe three. Uh, Fe is fine too because it's uh it's plating out into a solid, so it's going to be Fe. Yes, I would do Fe. Yeah, because plating out to a solid. Yeah, because you're taking the aqueous Fe three plus and you're making the solid. And that's it. Congrats, guys. That's all the info for the year. Yeah. Well, we're gonna do some practice problems, but. But we're not done. Yeah. We should have a pop up next time. No, we have to review. After the AP test, we yes, we will rest after the AP test. That's also that's at the end of AP. Right. You guys can plan it. And also for your birthday, it can be at two. You guys, of your you guys can plan it. May 9th. All right. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, now I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to work on 4.17. I would really like to do 14.7 or 14.7 and 14.8 today, and then do this next time as part of our review. As you can tell, it's, it's the galvanic cell, and we didn't really go over a galvanic cell problem, and I really want to. Um, so I'll give you guys about three minutes to try 14.7. It's very similar to what we just did, except we're working in reverse. Okay, so I'll give you guys um, about three minutes to work on 14.7. If you finish early somehow, you can try 14.8, um, but we'll go over 14.7 and then hopefully finish with eight. Okay, so um, we start with 2.22 grams of AG. And in this problem, what's the variable that we're trying to find? Time, exactly. Uh, how long would it take? That has to do with time, so seconds, okay? All right, so we start with 2.22 grams of AG. We want to convert it into moles of silver. Um, and so you got your molar mass. Um, then you should be able to convert it from moles of silver to the number of electrons. So if you take a look at it, it's silver one nitrate. So how many moles of electrons are we working with? 
one. Yeah, just one mole of electrons. Okay, from there, you can convert it using uh, Faraday's constant. Uh, one mole of electrons is going to give you uh, 96, 500 coulombs. And basically, this is going to allow you to find Q. Okay, so if you punch it into your calculator, 2.22 divided by 107.87 times 96,500, it's going to get something like that. 1986. So close to that number. Okay, so, um, and this is going to be Coulombs. Now, we know that I is equal to Q over T. So if we want to rearrange the equation for time, we can just flip the time and uh, amperes and get that. Okay, for Q, you can just plug in 1986 coulombs. For amperes, you got two amperes. So you just need to divide this by two. And then you get 993 seconds. That's it. So what's like the percent of that level? Say anything under, uh, between 1000 and 1980, around there. Okay. Something like that. All right, let's, no, we'll do this next time.